Hey y'all, I'm sitting down here in my craft room because we're um, redoing the altar room. Um, I had my altars up on the shelves to keep the cats and the kids away and my oldest has her own place now. So, and I've got it so um, I can make it so the cats won't get on my altars, although they tend not to do that. I originally put them up high for the animals and then you know with kids in the house um and that's my dryer going off um hey hey monique so anyways um due to opening the store my job and life in general there's some stuff that i needed to take care of i think a lot now during the pandemic a lot of people are trying to pay attention to some of the things that they they missed running around in normal okay so i have a sewing machine and i have a serger the serger was given to me by jeff cullen's mother who um was is, was a, a school teacher she may still be one and um, she just hadn't used it, and I always wanted a surgery, so she gave it to me. I actually got it working when we lived in Chicago, and I made um, uh, a really cool Halloween costume for Trinity. Me, Jeff, and Alan um, put together an amazing costume for her a few years ago. But when, after we moved, um, I, that was really weird. One of my sewing machines is missing, because I have a brother and I have a singer. So with the surgery. If you guys know anything about surgers, surgers work with loops. So if you know anything about them, they create the little scalloped finished edges of t-shirts and other garments. And so you don't have those loose seam allowances floating around inside your clothes. It helps finish things. And so I'm making these altar cloths and I really wish my surger worked. I noticed that after I moved here, I tried to use it to make mouchoirs, which are voodoo sant head coverings. And the bottom looper kept popping out. Now, if you know anything about a serger, and you probably don't, and for good reason, they are incredibly difficult to thread. But once you get it, it should work, right? But see, me, I always err on human error. I always make the assumption that it's probably not the machine, it's probably me, right? Um, and, and I think I have that attitude with a lot of people when they come to me and they tell me, oh, my magic didn't work or this is wrong, blah, blah, blah. Usually it's you. So I decided that I was, and then my sewing machine has three needle positions, but it's stuck in one of them. The machine still sews perfectly, so I'm like, fine. So I'm making new altar cloths today and I'm thinking, you know, I took a few days off. I go back to my day job tomorrow and I was thinking, let me call somebody and um, see if I can get this machine looked at. So I go on Google and I see that there's this guy who will come to you for $39.95 to give you an estimate. Okay, sounds reasonable. So I called him and I remember now why I didn't get my surgery fixed the last time. I've spoken to this man before. His name is Steve, and it's, I think it's sewingmachinerepairer.com. Whatever it was, it was like, I tried to explain to him. I said, hi, this is my name. I'm trying to uh, get my serger and my sewing machine with that. The first thing out this man's mouth was, I don't fix sergers, and good luck finding someone who can. And I'm just like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Okay, thanks. All right, well, what about sewing machines? Well, blah, 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 blah. He went through this, like, this whole spiel. Do you want me to come out today or tomorrow? I said, well, wouldn't you want to know what the problem is? Needless to say, I'm a Pisces, but I'm also a Taurus moon and a Taurus rising. I believe in talking to people and speaking to people in the ways that I wish to be spoken to. However... Y'all know me enough. It's so funny that people have accused me of being rude because people will come at you any old kind of way. I say this needless to say because... Sorry about that. My feelings are not easily hurt. My brother was trying to call me. My feelings are not easily hurt. I will call him back. He's called me twice. I, it better be urgent. But in any case, I'm going to finish the story. He was so rude. He was horribly rude 
and my feelings don't get hurt easily. And I think about people who craft and who sew, they tend to be very um, introverted. People who like to do crafts, it's usually solitary, so they usually don't mix with a lot of people. They're pretty private people. And I was thinking, what if this man got a hold of somebody else that may not have had, you know, the what I say, the, the giant vaginal fortitude that I have. And but this man hurt my feelings. And needless to say, I called someone else. And that person was like, yes. And the sad thing is, is this this damn machine keeps beeping. I swear to God. And I ain't heard from my brother in a couple of weeks, but he would call twice during this this message. Oh um, my about brother, I will call you back. I don't even know if he's on Facebook, why he would call me during a live if he sees me. But in any case, um I called the next person. And the next person was like, yes, and sadly, he has no shop. And if he comes to you, he will give you a really high estimate. And if you, you've allowed him to take the machine and he gives you a really high estimate, he'll trash your machine if you don't want to pay for it. You know, you can't even get your machine back. And he works out of his van. And I was like, yeah, that that was pretty much what I got from this dude. But this other guy was like, um, it, it is Tuesday. <laughs> Uh, I know his name. His name is Steve. And the sad part is, is the guy, the nice guy who actually owns the place where I'm taking my serger. His name is Steve, too. And he says, and the really sad part about it is that dude gets all of the business. And I started thinking about my line of business and how I have encountered some really nasty occultists. Some really nasty people, especially people who are not from the culture selling hoodoo products. And how nasty they can be in the airs of superiority. Um, and But my whole thing is, right now, my lesson for today, and the lesson that I wanted to share with all of you. Because like me, I was not in the mood. I don't like making these altar cloths on the sewing machine, it's very hard to press satin and get those seam allowances to stay in place um, long enough to sew them down. But you don't ever really know where someone is. You know, there's times where I have done divinations for people and even though the truth being the truth, often you have to find ways to express that so that you can meet people where they are. Needless to say, that man was in a very low place. And when you talk about people, they're always talking about low vibrational. That, and I think that's why it hurt my feelings. His vibration, his spirit was so low that it was like, how can anybody even really be like this? People are cruel. But I don't understand how you can be cruel off the bat with somebody you don't know who's not said anything, you know, crazy to you. Um, just trying to explain what the problem is, trying to be upbeat, you know. And what I realized is how important it is, number one, that there's a difference between being nice and being kind. I'm not, I'm kind. Kind in, is an empathetic approach. Hey, Ruth. Kind, kindness is an empathetic approach with while you're also sharing truths with people. Uh, being nice can be phony. But one of the things that I just, and I've had to do this, and this is something that I've had to work on because I have a tendency not to like to talk to people who don't know what the hell they're talking about. And, you know, I found over the years, if you correct crazy with a better attitude, more often than not, you will make progress in a conversation. Um, this man was made for internet trolling, okay? And obviously doesn't want anybody's business. So, you know, you know, this is a really hard time for a lot of people. And I took a few days off to get some house cleaning done, to get some stuff in order here in the house. Mark's traveling a lot this month so he's he's not here and just straighten out some things personally that I needed to do 
um, for myself. And, you know, when I do housework, when I'm sewing, when I'm making things for spirit, when I'm making things for y'all, I have to watch and make sure that I'm working from the right spirit. Those things have a way of permeating other people. Probably one of the most offensive things I've ever read was people thinking that I would do something horrible to their products, number one, because I'm a voodoo saint, or because they were upsetting, they've upset me. I sent a woman her money right back because she didn't read, she didn't pay attention, she came into the store three hours after ordering handmade candles, and then had the nerve to tell me she didn't want her money back, but she wanted to cancel her order. And I'm like, wait a minute. Because I told you that you didn't follow instructions. This damn machine is really working my nerves. Y'all hear this beep? I, I don't be in the basement when I'm doing laundry. I put it in. I go upstairs. I had no idea this machine beeped like this or I would turn it off. I'm turning off the beeps. But needless to say, I had a customer come in, didn't follow directions, didn't wait for us to call. And yeah, I was irritated. But I let her know, we'll call you. You shouldn't, and not irritated because she came in because she was excited about her products. Irritated because she's putting herself at risk. And make that very clear. And, you know, basically after the conversation where I thought I made myself very clear, she wanted to cancel her order and didn't want her money back. And I was just like, you know what? Why? Why would you want to cancel your order? Because energy, you know, and I'm thinking, you know, as a spiritual person, and maybe that's the way this community operates, and I'm just not part of the fray. Maybe the most popular occultists will do that to people. I've seen some really nasty people in this community, but I would never, ever put negative energy in anybody's work. But you know what? I gave her her money back because... I don't want people to think that of me. I don't want people to think that not only, you know, I'll do anything for a dime, but I would mistreat you in the process of doing so. And so, you know, and that's kindness. That's not being nice. That's not putting on a smiley face. They're like, oh, no, sweetheart, you weren't supposed to come today. No. You're supposed to follow directions. And the reason why I'm so adamant about that is because a lot of our ritual, a lot of our magic is about reading or listening and following directions. You know, whenever people go to Haiti to initiate with my mumbo, I say, you know what? I love to talk, but the best thing for you to do is to sit down, shut the fuck up and absorb everything. Just be quiet. So, you know, there are ways to help people and to educate people and still be kind. And that is a lesson that it keeps reverberating with me. Um, and, you know, when I'm just like, you know, and I'm thinking, you know, all these people put up the old nasty Google reviews about me because they can't sway me from the truth. I tell them the truth. They get mad. And I'm be like, oh, well, be mad when they walk away. Okay. But they still mad. But I'm rude. And that's, that's the thing. I know the difference. I know the difference in, you know, talking to people that you've never spoken to before. Hey, hey, Jamal. Hey, Jade. And I know the way, I just know how to talk to people. So, yeah, if y'all live in Columbus, y'all want to avoid the, the sewing machine repair guy that comes to your house for $39. Because I'm sitting here thinking, and I'm really trying to, you know, get my spirit in alignment. I mean, I ain't even go off on him. And y'all know that's, that's growth right there. I was not playing into this person's energy. I, I was just like, ooh, let me just get off the phone with this person as quickly as possible. But even though I did, that nasty energy, I'm going to go cleanse in a minute. I'm going to go get in the shower, take me a spiritual bath, resonated. I was just like, how do you expect people to spend a dime with you when you're nasty? Okay? You know, and one of the things, one of the biggest things I can tell you that I've had to learn in my life 
is that if someone is nasty with you, yeah, you could invest the time and be nasty right back. And y'all know I'm about it, about it. I'm a no-limit soldier. So at certain points, I'm going to give it right back to you. But I'm going to tell you the best thing for your soul. For my soul, anyway. I don't know why y'all listen to me, but if it works for you, great. The best thing for my soul is to step away. Do not give money or time to people in your life who put to consistently give out negative energy. And those are the very same people who will tell you that you are toxic. Those are the very same people who try to tell you that you are negative. That's gaslighting. It's, what do they call that? Deflection. But baby, I am sorry about the beeping, y'all. I hate that machine. I don't know. This machine is beeping every 10 minutes. So I'm going to let you guys go because I can never get no peace. Like now the, the washing machine keep beeping. My brother done called me twice and now I'm concerned. But I'm going to let y'all go. But that just really sat on me. And I told Pookie, which is play name for my daughter's boyfriend about it. And he was like, man, I ain't never really heard of nobody hurting your feelings. So you know that person really had to be funky. Be kind to people, y'all. Right now, too, especially. But just... What would the world be like if we just left folks the fuck alone and gave a, just a little bit more kindness rather than just coming out the bag all crazy? You know, even though we have a sign on our store that says we're open for a curbside pickup only, I'll see people looking in the glass. They won't knock because we tell them we're not going to let you in. But on occasion, I'd be like, step back six feet, wear my mask, step outside and see what they need. You're not, you can give them a card. You might be able to help somebody. Yeah, I might make a sale. But you are never, ever, ever going to be well with your soul. You may make a lot of money by cheating people and being nasty to people. But one thing is going to happen is you are never going to be right in, in your soul, with your gods, with your spirits. If you come out of the bag like that with people. You never know what somebody's struggling with. What if I, all I wanted to do was create something with my hands, which, by the way, is one of the best cures I find, or, or it helps, it doesn't cure it, best treatments for depression. What if I was suicidal and I just wanted to make something and I was upset because my machine didn't work and I called that man? We got to do better, y'all. Everybody has to do better. But sadly, I think I'm starting to think that I'm in a world where people just have given up hope. Don't get the help they need. He may be on the spectrum. I don't know. There may be something wrong with him. He may have just had a bad day. But I've spoken to this person twice in the last five years and he was nasty both times. We can't come to people like that. It doesn't, it doesn't take anything to be kind. It's going to actually be a blessing for you. Sorry for the beeping. Sorry for the phone interruptions, y'all. I'm going to let you go and go call my brother back. Bye-bye.